It having reached the hour of 5.30, I am calling the February 14th, 2023 Modesto City Council meeting to order and ask the city clerk to call the roll. Council Members Goodyear Brayton. Here. Council Member Alvarez. Here. Vice Mayor Ricky. Present. Council Member Bavaro. Here. Council Member Williams. Here. Council Member Wright. Here. And Mayor Wallen. Here. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation from Carlos Gonzalez from City Ministry Network. Good afternoon. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your goodness towards us in our city. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And thank you because we love our city, but you love it more. Today we pray for this council. You have placed them there and given them this great privilege and responsibility. They have been placed there for the good of the people. So I pray that through their decisions, those in our city can live full can live lives full of peace and dignity. I pray that through their leadership, Modesto is a good place to grow up in and grow old in. I pray you bless them, bless their families, and give them the grace and wisdom they need to lead the city. Thank you because for such a time as this, you have placed them on this council. Guide them, give them direction, and may they feel comfortable to turn to you in their time of need. Amen. Thank you. Does the city clerk have any announcements? Yes, Mayor. Item, item 16 is being removed from the agenda to be considered at a future council meeting. Correspondence was received for item 27, the comprehensive housing plan, and that correspondence was forwarded to council. And in addition, there was a request to remove item 7 from the consent. All right, thank you, and the correspondence was received that you referred to. Uh, do any of the council members have any conflicts of interest? Seeing none, I will report out on closed session. The city is commencing a recruitment for the charter officer position of city auditor. The city will be using a professional recruitment service and the City Human Resources Department. We will be accepting applications from both qualified individuals and public sector consulting firms. Let's put that there. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, legislation appointments. Uh, item one, consider accepting the resignation of Janice Keating from the City of Modesto Citizens Transportation Sales Tax Commission. Does council have any questions of staff? No questions, I'll open this item, item one, up to the open to the public. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on item one? I see one hand raised, Patrick. No, just uh, have my hand raised for public comment. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Are there any members of the public in present or online that would like to speak on uh, this item? Seeing none, I will close public comments regarding item one. Are there any comments from council members? Motion to approve. All right, I need a motion for resolution accepting the resignation of Janice Keating from the City of Modesto's Citizens Transportation Sales Tax Commission. I have a motion from Council Member Wright. Second. Second from Council Member Alvarez. Will the City Clerk please call the roll for this item? Council Member Scutia Brayton. Aye. Council Member Alvarez. Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky. Aye. Council Member Bavaro. Aye. Council Member Williams. Aye. Council Member Wright. Aye. And Mayor Zwellen. Aye. So this carries unanimously. Next is the public comment period. Does anyone wish to speak 
on any item under public comment. And this is for items not on the council agenda. Each person will have three minutes to speak. I currently have three uh, blue speaker cards and I see two hands raised. So I will um, call their names now. Rem uh, Roman or Ramon Paul? Is that person here, Raymond, Paul? I just received the card. Maybe they excuse themselves, I'll call them later. I'll, okay, online, Patrick. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, so it's been, uh, shoot, se seven months since uh, Paul Chavez was wrongfully killed by Officer Samuel Munsky. Seven months that we all, as a community, have to worry about Samuel Munsky killing us because we are holding an everyday object. Today, I want to talk about de-escalation. What happened on the day that Paul was killed was not de-escalated. From the moment Officer Muncy got out of his squad car that day, he had his gun drawn. These are not the actions of a man trying to de-escalate. These actions are plain and simple escalating situations. Although Paul did not threaten anyone or act irrationally with that hitch, he was shot and killed. In fact, Paul was the only one trying to de-escalate the situation. I ask, is someone saying it's cool, chill, the actions of a man trying to escalate or de-escalate the situation? I urge you to listen to the call and hear his words. To me, I see that as Paul trying to say, hey, let's talk about this. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. But in the time of 23 seconds, he wasn't able to articulate that as Mr. Mumsy decided to kill Paul. This is a scary thing that we have, as a community, have to be afraid of what a cop might do if he sees, if he feels like I'm not complying in the time frame that is right for him. This reminds me of a 1980s movie titled Judge Dredd, where officers are police, judge, jury, and executioner. The First Amendment says, and I quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Now, did Paul have his First Amendment right violated that day? Yes. Officer Muncy decided to escalate the situation and gave Paul 23 seconds to communicate that he needs no harm. He didn't come to the officers with that hitch, and he would have communicated that if Sam Muncy decided to de-escalate the situation and use words and not a bullet. So, I, you know, I wrote that um, about 60 days after Paul was killed. It still means the same, but now the community and even you sitting up on that board know that Officer Muncy uh, came into contact with Paul uh, about three weeks prior on his uh, 5150 call and um, took him to the you know uh, took him to the, the the hospital and all that. So he knew who Paul was. He met Paul. He dealt with Paul. Patrick, your three minutes have, have, are up, so can you please um, wrap up what you want to say in the next sentence? Yeah, yeah. You know, I will, but I think it's quite unfair that everybody has um, went over time, and um, I don't think I've ever went over time. And right now I'm talking over time and problem, which is kind of ludicrous. Um, I'm always respectful to you guys. I've never been rude to you. Any of you sitting up there, especially used to when everybody else has called you names. So, you know, basically what I'm trying to say here is it, it was a premeditated uh, homicide on uh, that day, and uh, nobody seems to care. 
that's going on within our city limits. You know, uh, I don't know how anybody can sit back and say the police here in Modesto are here to help because I'm terrified when I see the police now. And that's sad because I, I don't think I've ever committed a crime in my life. So I'm going to end with this. I just recently applied for a job with the uh, city of Modesto. I took a test and um, I haven't heard anything back. And I am uh, starting to believe that my presence here talking to you guys every council meeting is going to stand in the way of me being hired with the city of Modesto because I feel like this is uh, a corrupt uh, organization. Anyways, thank you. You're welcome. I will just reiterate that each person has three minutes to speak, and that's for everyone. Uh, next, uh, we have Raymond Paul. My name is Raman Paul, R-A-M-A-N-P-A-U-L. I'm here because I want to bring very important issue in city of Modesto, which is non-emergency medical transportation companies that are operating in the city limits of Modesto without the business license and without the um, PD, Modesto Police Department certification. I have bring this attention to the business office manager. I have bring these issues to Modesto Police Department. Um, but it seemed to me nobody's doing anything about it. So I am here. Um, just I want to bring some um, very important thing out, which is safety of patients. A lot of these patients cannot advocate for themselves because they are mentally disabled. They are confused. Um, a lot of times they're going to dialysis center alone without their families where they cannot verbalize their concerns. I have had patients um, that called and told me that, oh, I hit my head in the heavenly transport is one of the company that I'm bringing because that company was told by the city office not to operate without the permit and without the business, but he continued doing that. And he was also told by Modesto Police Department, um, he still continued picking up patients without the permit and without the license. Um, so uh, this person in this case was able to verbalize that I hit my head in the vehicle, but there's people that cannot do that. So where is the safety of our community, our members, our patients, we all need to help community and have a stricter rules and if somebody have violated such in this case heavenly transport continue to pick up patients from nursing facilities and from dialysis center and from home but they went through safety meeting yesterday it was approved and i think they're on council um on next two for approval so i want to object that for the safety of the patients thank you for your comments and i would like some actually sue to meet with you one-on-one -on -one if we can that would be great and Allison can uh, maybe if you can give her contact information to make an appointment with me all right next is uh, online Paul Soto uh, yes good evening council my name is Paul Soto uh, from the horseshoe body of horseshoe um, I'd like to preface what I'm going to say um, with the quote from Martin Luther King's a uh, letter from a Birmingham jail. It was written by him in 1963. Quote, actually, we who engage in nonviolent direction are not the creators of tension. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension that is already alive. We bring it out in the open where it can be seen and dealt with, like a boil that can never be cured so long as it is covered up, but must be open with all its ugliness to the natural medicines of air and light. And justice must be exposed with all the tension its exposure creates to the light of human consciousness and the air of national opinion before it can be cured, end quote. Now, I'm reading that and applying that within the context of public safety, that we as a community as a society cannot allow for 
a rational justification to be provided for the behavior of the officer in this particular instance with respect to Mr. Sanchez's murder. This is state sanctioned homicide. Now, that's what its technical term is. It's a state sanctioned homicide. Now, whether it was justifiable or unjustifiable, that is the debatable question. The problem arises when we as a community say that that particular example of what happened with respect to Officer Muncie's behavior, that that is a debatable issue. That right there in itself says that there's a sickness within the community that needs to be exposed to what Martin Luther King stated as the natural medicines of air and light. And I would associate the air and light that he referenced as honesty and truth, not gamesmanship, not subversive, uh, no, that's not what you're seeing, this is what actually happened. No, th those are not going to be acceptable. And here's why, is that you compromise the integrity of your authority to legislate power when you do that. You, you literally call into question the legitimacy of your ability to legislate power over the citizenry. The citizenry has an absolute protected right to redress those grievances to their government. And not to, you know, in a mother may I position, but actually demand of those representatives that have been voted into office to take a stand. Because the moral and ethical and legal authority that you possess will be called into question if you don't. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Mark uh, Sirkanik. Hi, council members. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Mark Sirkanik. I'm here tonight um, just to talk about the bike trails. Um, I've spoken with the city already. Uh, I know the, the mayor I spoke with. And then I talked to, um, I forget their names, but they're doing good work with the projects that are coming up. But I wanted to address, um, in particular, uh, Moose Park Bridge that goes leads into Moose Park. Um, it was closed down because of the flooding that recently happened. and. Even before this, though, the bridge itself has um, patch mark, patches on it with plywood that are already rotting through. I have pictures of it and stuff. It needs to be re uh, redone so it doesn't break ultimately and fall through. Um, the other one about bike trails is the curbs. Um, in my mom's neighborhood, they're replacing all the curbs over there and they're redoing them, which is really nice, but they already had down slopes. And I live over by, um, Morris, which is a bike lane, I think. And the curbs over there do not have any downslopes to get any access for wheelchairs or bikes. And I'm not sure why those haven't been replaced, but these other ones that had downslope spots are being replaced instead. I'm, I don't know how it all works. I have pictures of all these. Um, I don't know if anybody even rides bikes to see this stuff, but I'm on them all the time. And um, it would just be nice to see some improvement. I, there was some people from out of town looking to cross um, the park, and I directed them to the Moose Bridge, and I thought, it's just a shame that they get to see Modesto like that, you know, with this crappy bridge that they have to walk their kids across. So it would be nice that, it's been like that since I've moved over there, um, a couple of years now, so um, after the flood, it would be nice if it could get redone just for that reason, because they closed it down, and once it was closed, it was really hard to get around. You have to go and cross like the bridge on the road with all the cars, really dangerous. So that bridge is essential for just accessing the park for a lot of people who walk and get exercise that way, myself included, um, kids and families and everything. And so to have it like that, I just think needs to be replaced. That's the number one. And then the downslope things, I don't know why the curbs aren't, the oldest curbs in the, in the city aren't downsloped over there, but then these ones that are like newer, they are very nice new ones they're putting in, by the way. I, it's, it's great. I mean, I'm not, all of them should be that way, but, um, that's my time. That's really all I want to bring up. I just want to bring that to you guys' attention. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do I? Where do I do the pictures? Or do you guys even need these? Or this would be great to leave. Should um, Diane? Do you want, okay. Diane will take them. Our clerk okay. will take them, and we'll make sure that the appropriate staff receives them. Appreciate that. All right. Next online, we have Teresa Clutter. Hello. 
Hi, we can hear you. Hello, good evening. Um, I am here for Paul Chavez. Today is the seven month anniversary of his murder from Sam Muncy and Sergio Valencia. And still to date, we have no accountability um, for this murder. I know we've just had a new DA sworn in a few weeks back. Um, so I'm kind of excited for that. I'm hoping this is a new beginning, um, a, a fresh start basically uh, to approach the new DA because the last one sucked and didn't want to do anything. Maybe because she knew she was on her way out, who knows. But nevertheless, um, I am excited about that and I will uh, continue to ask you, Sue and the rest of the council to please speak to the new DA, Jeff, and bring up this case to him and uh, you know, advise him to look into it, at least look into it, is what we're asking for right now. Um, because our family is still mourning and still does not have justice seven months down the road. And we are still fighting for Paul and we will continue to fight for Paul Chavez until justice is served. So, um, and I also would like to mention that um, and say thank you for having the city come out and trim my tree. I do appreciate that and how swiftly that happened. I was very shocked, uh, but I do appreciate that. It looks amazing. So thank you for that. Um, but my main goal still to this day and will remain Paul Chavez, justice for Paul Chavez. Thank you. You're welcome. Next in person, we have Janet. Sorry. Hello, everybody. Buenas tardes. I am actually here to speak, uh, about three minutes, to speak um, in the behalf of one of our dearest friend. I recently picked up a job with the city transportation, which is TransDev or um, Ride the S, right? The city buses. Uh, unfortunately, on February the 2nd, one of our friends got assaulted. His car got stolen at gunpoint right in front, right outside the yard where we parked our vehicles or the city, the city buses. It is very unfortunate for me that this situation had to happen. Obviously, nobody else will come and speak because they're in fear of losing their job, which probably could happen to me for standing before you and speaking about this incident. Unfortunately, as well, we have to ask for money because he's not covered. covered. He has medical issues. He has bills to pay. And it's a lot of political stuff that we're well know. But I'm here, Mayor, to ask you to please look into the safety of this. What we do, we are told we serve as the public. As a new driver, I've seen it. We deal with people vomiting. We deal with people disrespecting us, verbally assaulting us. We deal with many things. But however, you guys are the client. And we are told that we have to put up with all that. If you get hit, you have to put up with that, or you'll lose your job. If the homeless ride the bus, no matter what, they don't have to pay sometimes. You have to put up with that because you guys don't want to lose any money and we have to make sure the routes are fed. All I'm saying, more than likely, I'll lose my job. But why am I doing it? Because I care for people that are actually are too afraid to come and speak up. It is very unfortunate that one of our employees who's been there over 20, possibly 20 years, got his car stolen at gunpoint from the yard. He can't even return back to work. His head was busted. He almost literally died. How is it that we are supposed to serve the public, but we can't even be safe working for you guys? Ms. Mayor, I know that um, there, politically there's a lot of differences. Crime has r rose up in our city. Um, we could discuss why and so on and so forth. But I do believe you as a nurse, graduated from Oakland in 1975, you understand the humanity behind it. This is a person, there are many drivers out there who, who want to say something, but you know what? Have you ever been into the, the room or the break room of a lot, of a lot of these city employees? The morale is really down. They even told me, why you go there, waste your time? They're just gonna laugh at you. They probably are. 
But you know what, maybe one of you might want to look into the situation. Maybe one of you want to say, how much budget do we have? Why can't we put more cops around there? At least to protect us. Do we have security? Yes. Are they there all the time? Absolutely not. So please, this is not the last time you hear from me. I'm pretty sure some of you remember my face. I might come around. Hopefully I don't lose the job because I actually do enjoy driving the city bus. It's really rewarding. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I would like for you to, um, Allison, maybe if you can just clarify since the buses are through Stan. They are. All right, with Bill Sandu then. I'm sorry, I just hate to have people looking for staff. So if someone could please clarify our city buses are now with Stan RTA. They are not with the city of Modesto, so great. All right, online, uh, we have Brittany Chavez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I would like to start off by saying that I am the wife of Paul David Chavez Jr. Right now, as we speak, I'm standing in front of where he was murdered right next to my parents' house, where he was trying to go and get sober. You guys keep trying to justify crap that isn't right. Murder is not justifiable. If it was anybody else who was not wearing a uniform, they would have been held accountable right now. And for the city not to hold him accountable is bull crap. Sam Lindsay knew my husband three weeks prior. He took that call because he knew who he was. What was said three weeks prior between him and my husband, I have no idea and I probably will never know. I'd like to see what I can find out though. I don't know what's going on with Potesto, but I find it very freaking ironic, pretty hilarious that the new DA that you hired is an ex SWAT cop from Modesto. I like how you guys all keep it in the family, huh? Just to make sure that you guys can still do your dirt and do your crap and think that nobody is looking your way. I urge you to tell the new DA, not ask, tell, because I know you have something that you can say or do. And that's not just with the mayor, that's you council members because you fucking suck at your gosh darn jobs. Brittany. You all got something that you can do. You need to do it because with the, I don't know if it was a pastor, a reverend, or whomever who prays over you guys, he said, and I quote, guide them and give them direction. Well, how can someone guide you and give you direction unless you don't have authority or power? So what authority and power do you truly have that you are wishing not to use on clearly what is shown on a video that is nowhere near justifiable. You need to fire Samuel Muncy, and you need to do something about Valencia because he's eventually gonna be in the same category as Muncy because he's the one who triggered everything. Because I'm coming after him too. And I'm coming after the chief of police, and I'm coming after the EMTs that were there. And anybody who was there that day, when they forced me out of my house, and said that I can go back in, and left me outside in the heat for hours, and then followed me when I finally decided to leave. And you're gonna tell me that you guys don't have a cop killing issue? It is ridiculous. And what I am hearing is redundant. And I am so sick and tired of these stupid meetings because you guys just have, get rid of him. Do police reform. Start retraining these officers so it doesn't happen again. And hey, back up. But I can't back up if I got assumed to be serial killer just like Amatia, right? I'm gonna end with this. Every time that I have one of these meets done, I'm gonna give you a song and I want you to listen to it because that's how I feel. Because sometimes these talks just ain't worth it. I want you to go and look up the Foo Fighters and look up the song Pretender. I urge you to watch the video because it's also, I believe, about SWAT and police brutality. I will be the hand that brings it all down. I will not stop. And I will come for everyone and anyone that I know or believe that had or has something to say or something to do about it and you choose not to. That hurts my well-being, my soul, and my humanity. 
That's all. All right. Um, next in person, Mitch. I believe I put down an agenda item number. Thank you. I just noticed that. Thank you. Um, uh, Sebastian Jones. Somebody left their phone. Okay. Okay. I wonder if it's um, the person that's with Bill. Lori, would you mind checking to see if the, the person that's with Bill uh, left their phone? Sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, Mayor start. Good afternoon, City Councilman. I mean, good afternoon, Mayor and City Councilman. Happy Valentine's Day. This is a love day, and I'm going to bring you some love. Well, once again, I'm here on a fellow City Councilman, Jeremiah. But wait a minute. Let me let the Paul Chavez family know that Mr. Jones has something for you and the other family because you guys are still fighting and putting it in the public air just like I'm doing. So let me get started. Mayor, you know, and probably a lot of people don't know how they disrespect Mr. Jones at an event. I know my voice is disabled, and I know I was exercising my First Amendment, but I was cut short, and Jeremiah William, your fellow city councilman, made a joke out of me. And when I'm here, for the love of him, being a preacher, misleading people. I want to say this, Jeremiah, do you remember when you grabbed me March the 5th or 6th about 3.30 10 10th Street it's on the cameras. I didn't want to expose you but you assaulted me. And the proof is here in this building. He jacked me up. But I'm not the only person. There's two more, Jeremiah. One you grab by the neck and the arm. That poor man. He's so afraid of you. He doesn't call you. He doesn't talk to you. He told me, Sebastian, I try to afford him. I'm scared of him. And you know what I'm talking about, Jeremiah. And you remember grabbing me. You assault people to get your way. See, stay that two minutes. I'm letting it out. I'm not protecting you no more. And I understand. The other guy, he didn't want to say nothing because he's a Latino and he didn't want to think it was going to be a black thing. But he will come forward. You can't wither your way out of this. You know, Jeremiah, those four warriors that I brought, there was a Latino, there was a white, there was a black, and there was a person.
person that was handicapped. I brought them for a reason. I brought them to let you know, because I know how you view on gay people's are. And she told your wife was in the hospital. Me and you talk. But I'm just going to let you know that you need to read. You said you're a preacher. You're misleading a lot of people. I need you that you watch over your hands or you only wash one. Sebastian, you need to wind it up here. I, Mayor, you, you keep on interrupting. That's two, three seconds you took off of me. I have five minutes. Okay. Well, you need to read Job 3, Psalm 26. Wait a minute, you guys spoke, did you? Well, Mayor, they love attacking Mr. Jones, but it's okay. I give out about 40 of these. Y'all know nothing about me. Look at all this medicine that you caused me, Jeremiah. But I'm going to expose you. March the 5th, 2020, around 3 o'clock, you assaulted me. But you didn't assault the little boys on Mac Henry. I was your angel. I saved you. I only did it because you was preaching. It makes me wonder what kind of preacher are you to assault me and disrespect my disability. My time is up. Every week I got something on you. These people don't know you. Y'all can be mad at me just because I'm trying to name a building after Dr. King. Like Martin Luther King says, let freedom ride. Let me build what I need to build. It's just a name and it's honor. But anybody can look. March the 5th, around about 3.30, you'll see Jeremiah on 10 10 Street jack me up and jacked up two more because he didn't get his way. I don't know what kind of preacher you are, but you need to ask for forgiveness. I have not piled any papers on you. I'm actually looking for love for you. Okay, Sebastian, it's time. And ask for forgiveness. Thank you, Mayor. And I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to disrespect. I knew I put my clown suit on, but I did that on purpose because I was watching you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, online we have Steve. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, thanks for starting my time before I start speaking, by the way. Um, I just want to say it's an absolute, absolute outrage that you guys aren't willing to at least pay proper uh, attention to Mr. Jones' accusations and complaints. Shame on you. I'd like to read a couple different texts. I have to race through it because you don't want to hear me talk. You don't value my thoughts. So let's move along. Uh, the city of Modesto on Facebook posted um, about the upcoming, um, you know, civilian police review board. And, and I'll just be quick about this. The description says this board will assist the city through education and outreach advocacy and engaging the community as ambassadors. Members will provide feedback, annual reports and recommendations to our city staff so we can continue to develop positive working relationships with our police department. I would also like to read to you um, from ModestoGov.com from the page um, on city council meetings. Uh, this is the rules related to public comments during your meetings. It says uh, only interested persons in the audience may present these matters. Obviously, just people of the community are supposed to talk, not you. Um, that is referring to us getting our time to speak. 
And then it goes on and it says, council members may respond to matters being presented under this item only as follows. A, briefly respond to statements made or questions raised. B, ask a question for clarification. C, provide a reference to staff, et cetera. D, request staff to report back at a subsequent meeting. And C and E, finally, a council member or the council itself may take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. Sue, you absolutely unequivocally, intentionally, definitively lied to this community and said that you aren't allowed to talk or do any of the things that I just clearly read in the rules. A few minutes ago, you demonstrated that you were lying by doing the same thing for somebody else. You've done that at each, uh, the last several council meetings where I have read these rules and brought this up. You don't care. It's absolutely disgusting. Um, you are allowed to comment and you are allowed to put things on an agenda. Um, my, I would like to hear you guys share your thoughts on the fact that our uh, DA, our new DA, is a former industrial police officer. There's also uh, cops that have been brought in to just uh, tell, say whatever they wanna say in the preliminary hearing uh, for Joseph Lamantia. Um, this kind of corruption we see everywhere. You've talked all through the Forward Together initiative about building trust in the community. I'd like to hear your thoughts on how any of those things are supposed to make me have any confidence in your leadership or in this police department, especially given the fact that Sam Muncy showed up um, on the scene with his gun already pointed at Paul Chavez, who was lying on the grass in the shade, and then killed him 23 seconds later. That's absolutely disgusting. Um, I also would like to ask that someone on this council have enough courage to not be controlled by the mayor or whoever it is that's silencing them. And please put it on the agenda to change the rules to give us, the community, five minutes to speak. It would be very, very easy. There's absolutely no reason to do it, uh, excuse me, to not do that, other than a continuance of the same patterns of repression and silencing that we are seeing from you. I'd like to know if you'd like to share your thoughts on any of those items. And I'd also like to please ask somebody to put it on a future agenda to change the rule to give us five minutes. Thank you for letting me go over a tiny, tiny bit. You're, wel you're welcome. Uh, next online, we have uh, Ramon Rodriguez. <coughs> uh, good evening, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, the last council meeting, I'm really disappointed in you guys. The way you uh, disrespected the rest in Jones it's, and not giving him proper accommodation as stated in the Americans with Disabilities Act, shameful. And also he pointed out they've been discriminated, allegations and everything. You guys didn't believe him, you didn't, didn't stand up. And I saw him again, and you guys still haven't done nothing. You just did nothing. And, and you know what's ironic? You had uh, last council meeting, you had the Black History Month, proclamation of Black History Month. And then when the lesson Jones spoke about his issue of discrimination, in public service and everything, you guys said, believe it. That is really shameful. And also, you guys didn't take anything seriously on everything, in, from police reforms to cruise, uh, lifting of cruise ordinance. You guys keep stalling progress every time. And that's really shameful because Modesto has potential, but when you guys don't step up the game, People are getting frustrated. They have, they're losing their faith in the city that they live and expect their leaders to follow. And for public housing in, uh, in a municipal golf park, I think that needs to be built because what I've been around, I've drove around South and West Modesto, and that's the spot that I really need because housing nowadays is just too expensive. Also, infrastructure needs to be improved. Not just that one area of Modesto, but all Modesto, because I've drove there a couple of times. And it's really, really shameful that we still fall in a car centric infrastructure, especially when, it's, when you have a higher population growth. That infrastructure 
cannot hold on to many more cars. We need to start looking at alternatives such as pedestrian friendly and public transport friendly infrastructure because someday California is going to pass laws and people are more concerned about climate change and it's happening right now. So you guys need to step up the plate, listen to people because we've been saying this for many meetings and you guys did not do nothing at all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next. Online, we have um, Bianca Lopez. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Thank you. My name is Bianca Lopez. I'm co founder of Valley Improvement Projects here, a nonprofit organization for social envir and environmental justice in Stanislaus County. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm bringing more um, bad news to community members, but I'm here today um, to publicly notify you and the parents who are listening to us here today. February is also um, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. In collaboration with the, Nas the National Nonprofit Environmental Working Group, VIP released a report late last month that showed that in 2021, a million pounds of agricultural supply through Excuse me, Bianca, the, um, your voice is cutting out. We can't hear you. Me now? Now we can. Okay, sorry. No problem. Approximately 1.3 million pounds, or 20% of the pesticides applied in 2021, we're off to loan a cancer causing fumigant pesticide, according to OECA, the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessments. Toxic pesticides are applied in Stanislaus County fields near 123 schools, and to loan is under or is uh, used in over a dozen schools across the county. Students who attend these schools or live near where pesticides are applied are among those who may face higher exposure to pesticides. Children spend much time playing outdoors and, and or on the ground, increasing the risk of dermal or skin exposure or inhalation. We know that the concentration of chemicals can become toxic in children quicker due to their smaller bodies. In addition, these chemicals are damage or even long last damage because their organs and- Bianca, you're cutting out, unfortunately. We cannot hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No problem. We're looking, we're looking for your support and community support, parent support, because we can't wait for the state to mandate better protections for our children. We're asking the Ag Commissioner to expand the school buffer zones to at least five mile radius. We want the farmers to re be required to check in with principals to make sure that children are not on campus when toxic pesticides are being applied, such as fumigants. We want the county to reduce the use of to loan applications across the county. We want the Ag Commissioner to expand on current pesticide notification pilot program currently running in the town of Grayson. And we want all uh, notices of intent to be web posted for proper transparency and for community protections. We're seeking parent participation and reaching out uh, to the district um, superintendents, to school board of trustees, city council members, and parents to uh, help us make these demands of the, of the Ag Commissioner. If you'd like to join us on our asks of the Ag Commissioner, please join us. Uh, send us an email at valleyimprovementprojects at gmail.com. You can also reach us by phone at 209-589-9277. City council members, you have all been, uh, we've all, we, I'm sorry, we have emailed all of you with this report. Mayor, thank you for responding that this was interesting information. Uh, we really need some serious action upon uh, the leadership in this community. We can't, you know, just acknowledge it by saying thank you. We must stand up for better protections to protect children. And I'm sorry, uh, this is, um, 
quite a challenge, especially when today we hear about a lot of social and environmental injustices as people are speaking uh, here at public comment. But we're looking forward to working together as a community to make sure that we can protect children, um, especially because their bodies are just more or less resilient than ours. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I do not see any other hands raised online. And I have one blue card for item 27. So is there anyone else wishing to come forward to speak under public comment? All right. Next on the agenda is consent items. An item may be removed from consent and discussed at the request of a member of the public or council member. Is there anyone on the council that would like a consent item removed for further discussion? Is there anyone in the public that would like an item removed for consent for further discussion or comment? All right, will the city clerk please read the consent items? Yes, Mayor. Item two, consider approving the minutes from the January 24th, 2023 council meeting. Item three, consider approving a resolution continuing to authorize remote teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361. Please note there were minor revisions to the staff report and resolution. Revised documents have been provided to the council and are also available to the public. Item four, consider approving a first amendment to the legal services agreement with Castillo, Moriarty, Trans, and Robinson in the amount of $200,000 for a total agreement amount not to exceed $245,000 for continued representation in police-related matters and a Fourth Amendment to the Legal Services Agreement with Barkovich, Kronick, and Shanahan to adjust rates for continued representation in water-related matters. Item 5, consider approving the recommended budget adjustments for fiscal year 2022-2023 annual operating and CIP budgets. Item 6, consider rejecting all proposals for request for proposal number 2122-44 for the San Luis Regional Transit Oriented Development Plan. Item seven, there was a request from the public to remove item seven from consent. consent. Item eight, consider approving a resolution authorizing the execution of escrow documents to transfer fee title to approximately 2.61 acres of real property, APN 007-037012, currently owned by the city to Hans Wagner III, 2015 trust consistent with a previously authorized settlement of an eminent domain action to acquire property for the SR-132 West Freeway Express Phase, phase 1 project. Item 9, consider approving the First Amendment to increasing the agreement amount with ready-to-work for litter abatement services by $872,500 from $450,000 to revise total amount of $1,322,500 over a five-year extension option. Item 10, consider approving a Third Amendment to the Construction Management Services Agreement with WSP USA Inc. for the SR-132 West Freeway Expressway Phase 1 project for a total amount not to exceed $13,140,236. Item 11, consider approving a will serve letter and an outside service agreement for sewer connection for the property located at 4601 Yosemite Boulevard in the unincorporated Stanislaus County just outside the city limits of Modesto, APN 133-001-019. Item 12, consider approving freeway maintenance agreement STA 132 PM R11 slash 0.3 R14.7 for the state of California for the SR132 West Freeway Expressway Phase 1 project. Item 13, consider accepting an informational report for the December 2022 accounts payable payment register and void report. Item 14, consider accepting an informational report for the September and October 2022 grants application and awards. Item 15, consider approving an informational update to the transient occupancy tax audit. Item 16 was removed for the agenda and will be considered at a future council meeting. Item 17, consider accepting the monthly investment report for November 2022. Item 18, consider approving the purchase of a 2019 Chevy Tahoe from the Light of Fire Protection District for a total amount not to exceed, exceed $60,000. Item 19, consider approving the revisions and additions to the Modesto Police Department's hiring and recruiting incentive program, increasing the estimated annual allocated amount by $365,500 to a new estimated annual total of $415,000 and rescinding resolution numbers 214-467 and 216-378. Item 20, consider approving an agreement with Mark Thomas and Company, Inc. to prepare construction documentation for the Dry Creek Regional Park to Tuolumne River Regional Park Trail Connection Project for a total amount not to exceed $511,424. Item 21, consider an ordinance amending sections 3-2.14, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2
01.1 of Article 14, Chapter 2, Title 3 of the Modesto Municipal Code related to speed limits to determine and designate speed limit changes. Item 22, consider authorizing the submittal of applications to the Department of Transportation Clean California Local Grant Program. Item 23, consider approving the right-of-way dedication by the City of Modesto on behalf of the public for the future ARIO way extension for public use and right of way. Item 24, consider approving the submission of a grant application to the California Department of Water Resources for the 2022 Urban Community Drought Relief Grant Program. All right, I have a comment from our city attorney, Jose Sanchez. And I apologize, I may have heard it wrong. Um, the, the staff report, the changes that, that were made and put up here and for the public were for item number eight. What's it eight? I, okay. I thought I heard number uh, item number three, but it's item number eight. My mistake, item eight. All right, thank you very much. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent uh, calendar motion. with the removal Second. of item um, eight, number seven. seven for discussion? Seven and 16. 16 is not for discussion. It's continued to another meeting. I'm sorry. So I need uh, a motion for the consent calendar minus item seven, which we will discuss. Item 16 will not be discussed. It's removed for a future meeting. So moved. All right, I have a motion by second. Council Member Alvarez. Uh, um, second by Council Member Williams. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Squithier Brayton. Aye. Council Member Alvarez. Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky. Aye. Council Member Bavaro. Aye. Council Member Williams. Aye. Council Member Wright. Aye. And Mayor Zwellen. Aye. So that carries uh, unanimously. So now we will go back to item, consent to item seven. Consider approving a first amendment to an agreement with management advisory services for planning, consultation, and support, increasing the agreement to a new total not to exceed $109,500. And we have Jessica Hill. Great. Thank you, Mayor, mm -hmm. City Council, Jessica Hill. Um, for a little bit of background, in 2022, our planning division has gone through some staffing transitions, and in order to assist with the continuity of services, the city went into agreement with Municipal Advisory Services in November 2022. We are nearing the full expenditure of the current agreement, so staff is recommending that increasing the agreement for the continuity of services to the public, while planning positions are being recruited for and filled. And with that, I can help answer any questions. All right, do we have any uh, questions from council members? I see no questions from council members. Um, I will open this up to the public. I see John Williams' hand raised. Is this regarding item seven on consent? Hi, right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I apologize. That was not regarding to anything specific, of course. I was just waiting for the public comment period. Okay. Uh, we've completed our public comment period. I was not aware of that. I do apologize, of course. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. I see a hand. Uh, Steve's hand raised. Is this for item seven on consent? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I've had my hand up for a while now. I was trying to ask that item, uh, consent item four be removed, um, but I, I don't know why you didn't give me a chance. Um, maybe I'm confused by the order or by how fast you've been rushing through things, but I've been trying to raise my hand to ask that consent item four be removed. All right, I apologize. I did not see your hand raised until now. Well, you need to remove it because I don't want to give attorneys a, another dime to defend the, the disgusting things that the, your police department does. I would like consent item number four removed. All right, our city attorney will um, make a comment. I bet he okay. will. Okay, we, we'll finish with our public comment regarding item seven first. So are you gonna be removing item four or are you just gonna ignore me? I live in this town and I've been had sitting here with my red hand raised. We're, okay, we're not ignoring you. We're just gonna finish with item seven first. Okay, and then, and then will you will back. be taking that off then? Then we will. I, I'll leave you alone if you tell me you're gonna like uh, acknowledge my request. We're gonna finish with item seven first. All right, are there any other public comments regarding item seven? I see Kevin Valine's hand raised. 
Thank you, Mayor. Can you uh, hear me? Yes, we can. Um, could Jessica speak more on item seven? Like, I, I understand that the city is um, allocated seven planning positions. Um, how many are vacant currently? And can you tell me the, the type of position, like senior planner or principal planner? Um, how long this position has been vacant and, and how soon the city expects them to be filled, as well as what impact um, these vacancies have had on, on some of planning's uh, department's work. I mean, there's the general plan, there's the housing element, there's uh, uh, a myriad of plans that they're working on. Thanks, right. Kevin, uh, for your questions. To reiterate, um, there are seven planning positions within the planning division. Um, we have gone through significant changeover, and so we do have three positions that are within you know one year of starting here at the city. Second, we do have our planning manager position vacant, and we're on the process of bringing on a new principal planner. Um, and so that's kind of a general overview. What we're doing is trying to look to consultants to help ensure the continuity of services and all plans get completed in the um, timelines that have been originally presented. Thank you. I didn't understand um, when you said, um, are you saying that there's three vacancies among the seven planning positions or that you've just filled three in the last year and you have four vacancies? I, I didn't understand that. So I, so I apologize for the confusion. So we currently have two vacant positions. One's the planning manager and the other principal planner who's coming on at the end of this month. And, what, and so, the, so you talked about three positions. Those are three, three new planners in the last year? And, co correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, is there, are there any members of the public that would like to speak, any other members of the public regarding item seven on consent calendar? Seeing none, uh, any comments from council members? All right, we will close the public comment period on this item. And I am seeking a motion for a resolution approving the first amendment to an agreement with management advisory services for planning consultant cons consultation and support, increasing the agreement amount by sixty thousand from forty nine thousand five hundred to a new total not to exceed one hundred nine thousand five hundred dollars, and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute the amendment. Do I have a motion? So move. Motion by Council Member Wright. Second. Second by Council Member Ricky. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Scutier Brayton. Aye. Council Member Alvarez. Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky. Aye. Council Member Bavaro. Aye. Council Member Williams. Aye. Council Member Wright. Aye. And Mayor Zwellen. Aye. So it carries unanimously. So now we will uh, hear a comment from the uh, city attorney regarding uh, pulling item number four from consent. Yes, Mayor. The item has, the council already took action on item number four. Uh, Mayor, when you asked whether there were any items to be removed um, by the public or by council, that wasn't removed. However, um, there could be a motion to reconsider, and I'm happy to make a comment about what the item is, Mayor, um, and just, just quickly, the item is amending two legal services agreements, one with, Mor uh, with Castillo, Moriarty, Tran, and Robinson, in order to increase the not to exceed amount for continued representation of the city with uh, legal matters and litigation related to police cases and also an amendment to an agreement with another uh, law firm, Markowitz, Chronic, and Shanahan, and that is related to water-related matters, specifically the water grab and water rights uh, issues. All right, Are, is there any council member that would like to make a motion to uh, pull uh, consent item four for dis or reconsideration. It's up for reconsideration. Is a new motion required or is an amendment to the original mm -hmm. motion? It would require a motion to reconsider. And in, 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 um, just to seek a full transparency and uh, there is interest in, in this particular agenda um, consent item, I would, uh, I would move forward to making a motion to Second. revisit. All right, so I have a motion from Council Member Scudia Brayton and a second from Council Member, Member uh, Bavaro. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Scudia Brayton? Aye. Council Member Alvarez? Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky? Aye. Council Member Bavaro? Aye. Council Member Williams? Aye. Council Member Wright? Aye. And Mayor Zwallen? Aye. So we will um, go forward 
to uh, consider approving on I consent item four, consider approving a first amendment to the legal services agreement with Castillo, Moravi, Tran, and Robinson in the amount of $200,000 for a total agreement amount not to exceed $245,000 for continued representation in police-related matters and a fourth amendment to the legal services agreement with, I hope I don't, uh, that name. I'm not sure about that. I know the next two. Bar Bar Barkowitz. Barkowitz, Chronic and Shanahan PC to adjust rates for continued representation in water-related matters. So I will turn this over to our city attorney, Jose Sanchez, for staff report. Absolutely, Mayor. Mm -hmm. So along uh, the lines of the comment that I made earlier, this item is uh, amending two agreements that this with law firms that the city currently uses. Um, as I mentioned, one with Castillo, Moriarty, Tran, and Robinson, and that's in the amount of $200,000. Um, that's increasing the not to exceed amount for that agreement in order for continued representation. This firm does represent the city in law enforcement matters. Um, including litigation that the city faces. Uh, the other agreement is the uh, amendment to the legal services agreement with uh, Barkowitz, Kronick, and Shanahan, and that is for continued representation. It does amend their, their rates. They, hadn't amend, they haven't amended their rates for several years. Um, the increase is generally to the principal attorneys assigned to the city matter increasing from $310 to $325 an hour. Um, and that is related to water rights. And in particular, this is a, in a, a related to a suit challenging the state water board's approval of regulatory uh, changes that require um, that, uh, that about 40% uh, of the flow of the Tuolumne River remain in the stream for fish. The regulations are known locally as the water grab uh, litigation. Happy to answer any other questions. All right, do we have any questions from council members? Seeing none, I will open it up to the public. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to speak regarding item four on consent? And I see um, two hands raised. It appears that Paul Soto is the first hand raised. Uh, yes, Paul Soto. Um, I'd just like to point out that you're publicly allocating money to fortify the city's defense fund related to police uh, crimes. They're not misconduct. I know we call it that. Um, we need to move away from that because when a citizen commits a crime, we call it a crime. But when, a, when an officer is suspected of also committing a crime, we call it misconduct. And, and you're already fortifying the fund necessary in a very public way to defend that which is on its face. It is a prima facie indefensible situation that was created by the officer. It wasn't created by the citizen. The, the issue that this money is going to be allocated for is to defend that which on its face is indefensible. So we, we have to like, we can't become a society that makes sense of that. I mean, that is insane. That is a practice in insanity. Because what you are already doing is saying, hey, we're not gonna, we're not gonna cop to nothing. We're not, but yet you demand of the citizenry you demand that they be held to account. You absolutely demand it. And you will drag them through the mud, you will drag them into court and make absolutely certain that they get the maximum amount of time in prison for what it is that they have done. I'm telling you, you guys are moving in a very, very dangerous area where you are actually delegitimizing your ability to govern a society. To be good. And it scares me because I got a lot of family in Modesto. That's why I'm participating in these meetings. You have a lot of transplants from San Jose over there to Modesto. So I'm concerned about my family members being exposed to this police department. That's my interest in these conversations. I have an absolute interest in the safety of my nieces, my nephews, and my grandnieces and nephews, you know, and anybody else from Sanjo that lives there. 
So you really need to consider the hypocrisy and the complete insanity that is being practiced right here in front of us with these, with these budget allocations to defend the indefensible. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, um, Steve. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, it's, it's disgusting that um, public money, of which I pay into, was used to murder Trevor Seaver, was used to murder Paul Chavez, was used for an awful lot of things I'm not going to sit here and list off right now. Um, we've been coming to you for a couple of years now asking for change, and you just brush us off. You lie to us to silence our voices. You, you, you move public comment time up a little, and this is not the first night you've done it. And it works sometimes, right? Like there's one individual who didn't get to speak. Now, I'm just going to assume that there's a possibility that I was confused and did not raise my hand quickly enough to ask for consent item four to be removed. Um, but it's disgusting that you want to add so much insult to so much injury by continuing to give this murderous police department more and more money at every turn. And you need to stop rushing things, Sue. We see you do it. Stop moving fast so that... Ordinary people like myself who are having a hard time keeping up will end up not having a voice. You're going to do whatever you want, but I want you to know we see you and it's disgusting and I'm going to speak up about it and I'm not going to stop. We should not be giving a raise to attorneys to help them cover up for your crimes and for the crimes that you enable. It's disgusting and I'm tired of our money going into that when every single time I tune into a council meeting, I hear various problems throughout the community being brought up and you really never really do very much. You fix a tree every once in a while. I'm sick of the way you guys don't want the community be, to be in on this. You want to be left alone to do your own thing. And I obviously can't stop you at this point, but shame on you. We should not be giving more money to attorneys to help our cops kill us. Right. Uh, next online, Teresa Clutter. Yo, Sue, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, you do talk. Okay, so I wanted to say, I know that you know a couple definitions because you like to use a couple cool words and stuff, but the definition of insanity is repetition of patterns and expecting change. This is very disturbing how much all eight of you guys believe you're not insane because in reality, I believe three or four months ago when we were talking about this, um, this uh, organization that we were trying to open for <laughs> protesting and for standing for what's right, I'm pretty sure I said something about, I don't want to do anything about that $1.2 million that was going back to the police department that you guys didn't want to talk about where it was going. And I'm sure this is the beginning of it, right? This is, this is a part of, the, this is a fraction of that $1.2 million that they got that raise of. So I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just concerned. No, 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 I'm not concerned. I'm assuming that you guys are a mob now. You guys are some mobsters that can just get better attorneys and just like Glock people and just murder people and then get better attorneys because you guys need help now. You guys need help hiding your evidence some more. You guys all look very, very, very wrong for even having this up for discussion because funding murderers is not up for discussion. That's absolutely absurd. And quite frank, I don't even want to be a part of a society who wants to even bring it up as a table discussion. Like, Hey kids, how was your day today? You're part of the future. By the way, you think we should uh, get that, that one murder cop and we should give him a, a better attorney this time and, and, and it should be on us? Don't worry about it, it's on the house. This is disgusting. And, they, and, and who's to say, I mean like, who are you, who are you funding? And I'm really, I'm really, really wondering what your taxes are looking like, Sue. I'm really thinking we should start opening them books because it sounds like there's some fucking scam going on. There's some scam of $1.2 million going back to the funding of the police that you guys all go slap asses and go have drinks after work and then go all like spend the money together. Is that some scam that we need, we need to look into now? Because not only are we looking for a complete 
third party auditor, but apparently we need to look for an entire mayor and district attorney too. It looks like what we need is some brains because somebody spilled all of your guys like spaghetti on homemade dinner table and then used it as talk to fund somebody that did it. I mean, come on, this is absurd. And I mean, obviously you did not grow up in the church. It's obvious that you have no morals and values. It's obvious that all of your parents did a terrible, terrible job, or you guys were adopted and have some daddy issues that you can't get through. But this is no way to get through it. Period. This is no way to handle your guys' hostile behavior. Cut them off. If you guys need therapy or need some other way to talk about your issues, and that's something you guys need to work on. But as far as funding, funding people who already have a, I mean, I don't think they need any help. Do you? It looks like they're getting away with what three murders this year. Your time is up. Oh hey, oh yeah. So I, I say no on item four. All right. Don't. Next online. Is it Teresa? Brittany. 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 So Brittany Chavez. Can you hear me? Yes. Did I just hear that you guys are going to fund more into bullcrap? So not only will you not fire Sam Muncie, do something about Valencia, but you want to fund the corrupt crap. Are you freaking serious right now? Oh, if you don't get this item <laughs> not removed, you have not, you have no idea. I will have rallies and protests and everything else that I can do to get done. Do you know how many people that go up to me when I go and I hang up the flyers of everything about everything that's going on telling me that what they see was unjust, it wasn't right. But you want to fund them more, but you won't even get a real third party freaking whomever you need to get. It says you have the freaking Jalepsi. I'm not even going to use what his title is because the title does not freaking work anymore. This is absurd. This is exactly why I told you that your crap that you were doing with this whole forward togetherness crap is never going to work because look what you're doing. You've been been laying with the devil. You've been been sinning. You've been been doing the same thing. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You do not care because all you care is about that paycheck and what's going to give you in that seat. Now I'm infuriated even by 10. I suggest you remove item four. Or I'm going to have a lot of different causes. I'm going to have to be doing a lot of rallying and protesting. I don't care if it's just me because I've been out there where it was just me. Because at the end of the day, there's a problem in your city. At the end of the day, there's a mayor and there's council members and you wish to decide not to do anything about it. And now you wanna fund more corrupt people? Are you off your damn mind? Good. Let me find out that it gets pushed through and I'm gonna go all in times 10 before you even seen what I was before then. That's bull crap and you freaking know it. And for you new council members, not to speak up or say anything, well, guess what? I guess we all know the real reason why you went in there, right? As long as it collects a paycheck. Because when you go in there and you do what is supposed to be done right by the people, you do right by the people. Do I have to keep reminding you of doing right by the people? I vote no and to take out item four. Do what's right. Because that is not right and that's not just. People don't need more money to cover up corruption. And then you wonder why people go and they say that they have to defund stuff. I never once said that I had to defund the police or anybody should defund the police. What I said is we needed reform and retraining and a lot of other things. Our tax dollars are there. You do not need more. And with, with what you have, you can do those things, but you choose not to. Yet you create different scenarios so that way you can put it in there to collect more so that way you all have your pockets funded. 
I agree with my sister, just like I did before. I think we need to start looking at the books and seeing where the money's coming from and where the money is going and where it's not going from. Because at this point, it's a money thing. And if it's a money thing, well, you know what they say, paper trail's a paper trail. You can find everything and anything. I'm done. All right, are there any other members of the public that would like to speak regarding item four? Sebastian? Yes, I'd like to say so. I'm kind of in agreement with him. Now, how is this money, this 200000 do they split that up with the uh, attorneys? Well, the attorneys that work on it would be the ones that are paid. Okay, so there's that 200000 they'll send a bill in, right? And you pay them. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to say that. And, uh, those councilmen, they did talk when he said something about my disability. They spoke up, but why they won't speak up on other items? All right, thank you. Are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on consent item four? I do not see anyone in person or online, so I will close public comments for this item and ask council members for comments. Seeing none, I need a motion. This would be, do I need two separate votes on this? You can do it together. together. Yeah. A resolution approving a First Amendment to the Legal Services Agreement with Castillo, Moriarty, Tran, and Robin, Robinson in the amount of $200,000 for a total agreement amount not to exceed $245,000 for continued representation in police litigation matters and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute the amendment. A resolution approving a fourth amendment to the legal services agreement of Barkowitz, Chronic, and Shanahan PC to adjust hourly rates for continued representation and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute the agreement. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. I have a motion from Council for Vice Mayor Ricky. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Council Member Alvarez. Will the city clerk please call the roll for this item? Council Member Scudier Brayton? Aye. Council Member Alvarez? Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky? Aye. Council Member Bavaro? Aye. Council Member Williams? Aye. Council Member Wright? Aye. And Mayor Zwellen? Aye. So the motion carries um, unanimously. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is Council comments and reports. Do any of the council members have any comments and reports? All right, council member Alvarez. Thank you, mayor. I just wanna thank the public for being here with us this evening on this uh, Valentine's Day. Um, Operation 9299, I wanna give a special uh, commendation. I wanna commend them uh, for their work along the Tuolumne River and highlight their latest river cleanup that took place February 11th. Operation 99, or 9299 offers a, a monthly opportunity to reclaim, rehabilitate, and restore the area along the Tuolumne River. Uh, this kicked off the year 10 for the organization and was the 88th cleanup to date. Uh, volunteers were able to clean up along the north side of the river at Gateway Park from dry Creek to Dryden Golf Course. Uh, a total of 83 volunteers removed one ton of materials, including two shopping carts and one tire. Volunteer crews did a great job preparing the area for the upcoming NECA NorCal mountain bike racing event, uh, events, plural, taking place uh, February 18th and 19th and the 25th and 26th. Uh, on, and our own local Modesto Composite Dust Devils uh, will be racing uh, in those in those competitions. A special thanks to Phil McKay with DFW Natural Resource Volunteer Program, the program department, uh, or the parks department uh, for the for the trash bags, Dwayne Becker with the city of Modesto for the safety gloves, and Dell Ambrose for hauling away the shopping carts. Uh, the city of Modesto recycling also helped uh, to dispose of, of uh, the tires. And I also want to highlight uh, my committee assignments. I am um, on these following liaison committees. Tuolumne River Regional Park JPA Commission, I chair that com committee. 
uh, and the City County Airport Advisory Committee, Citizens Housing and Community Development Committee, League, League of California Cities Executive Committee, and I'm an alternate for the San Joaquin County Air Pollution Control Board uh, Special City Selection Committee. Thank you. You're welcome. And next, Council or Vice Mayor Ricky. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I also want to uh, say happy Valentine's Day to everybody, um, especially to my wife. I love you, and thanks for always supporting me oh. in all my endeavors. That's a good one. Um, so one thing I want to talk about tonight, uh, you know, Modesto's kind of always had uh, a self-image problem, as long as I, at least as long as I've been here. And I think much of that is kind of self-inflicted, um, just by the way we talk about ourselves sometimes. But... I think our challenge right now is to inspire our city government to, you know, make a change in vision. And we recently received um, the report from Stanislaus 2030 project. Um, that was a community collaboration that tried to create a strategy for regional economic growth and opportunity in the coming decade. And it outlines our needs for better paying jobs, for new industries, and the need for innovation. Um, and I think part of that in looking at our, what we need to do as a city is address some of our big needs. You know, we need housing downtown. Uh, not only would housing downtown address the epidemic levels of housing needs in our city, but it also increases revenue and has significantly lower infrastructure support costs, such as sewers, sidewalks, and public services, because they're already in place. Um, we need to increase reasons for people to visit Modesto. We need to come up with real workforce housing throughout the city that people can afford on a $15 or $20 an hour job. Um, and we need more solutions to reduce homelessness so that when our chat or ranger teams contact a person who's asking for help, we have more programs and places to help them. Um, there's just so much hope right now and there's so much potential and let's, let's make it happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Scudia Brayton. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Happy Valentine's Day. I think I'm going to follow the Vice Mayor's lead and acknowledge, um, say Happy Valentine's Day to my husband, Dr. Paul Brayton. Love you, boo. I also love and want to acknowledge my two beautiful sons at home, Dominic and Luke. And speaking about amazing youth, um, I want to, um, since the last time we convened, I had the honor and privilege of um, judging um, a youth, a Hispanic leadership youth competition, a, a speech competition. And it was just amazing to see all these young men and women um, speaking on the subject of what is a leader. So in their own words, they developed a, um, a speech and spoke to that speech and, and, and used different um, styles in, of delivery and development. It was just very, very impressive to see the effort they put into it and just how professional they were. And if these individuals were a symbol or what's to come as future leaders here in Modesto, we are in very good hands. The top three um, uh, contenders went on to the next level of competition. Also, um, speaking on Modesto's youth, earlier last year we um, appointed and uh, uh, formed um, actually, we reinvigorated the Modesto um, Youth Commission. They met today. And um, this is a dynamic group of young leaders that serve in an advisory capacity to the city council. So they are our eyes and ears out in the community and advise us on any and all topics that impact youth in Modesto and help us make better decisions for them. Again, um, we need to invest in our youth we need to support our youth and we need to applaud them for the amazing work they are doing. Their work will be um, their legacy here in Modesto and we will all be better served for it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Williams. Yes, I had a wonderful weekend uh, starting out at uh, the park, 4th Street Park is what we used to call it and now it's Cesar Chavez Park and uh, I was accompanied by a couple of my fellow um, uh, council members, Council Member Alvarez and Mayor Zuwallen, Sue Zuwallen, and uh, it was put on by the Parks and Rec Department, 
under the direction of Bruce Lockhart, who is an over 40 year uh, employee. Uh, there were a lot of vendors there. Uh, there was a lot of good information that was given out. There were some uh, cultural dances from all areas of our world. It was outstanding and it was great to be there. And kudos goes to the Parks and Rec for putting this on and making it a success. Uh, then Sunday, I had the awesome privilege of being able to go to uh, Christian Love Baptist Church who was very kind and uh, uh, bestowed me with the uh, Trailblazer Trail Blazer, uh, Award, which was very kind of them for works that we have done in the community. Uh, and then I do want to go back a week or two or, or so. Uh, this council had a retreat, and the retreat was, was well. It was outstanding. It was a help for all of us to get more acquainted with each other. And uh, we're in good hands. Uh, the city, city of Modesto, you're in good hands. Uh, I know that you may have this issue or that issue, uh, but together we're stronger and we're stronger together. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I will just make a, add a couple of thoughts to this evening's meeting. Uh, as was mentioned, we do have a youth commission. And this morning I received a, a briefing on our general plan update. This is what will guide our community regarding all the things that we've talked about this evening and all the things that our council members mentioned for the future in, into 2050. Uh, but one of the components of it that I was most impressed with, after dozens of community me meetings and input already that we've received, one of those meetings was held at, a high, at our, one of our local high schools for the students. So that really, um, I think says how important we feel our young people are in the community and how we really are trying to make changes so that their future will be bright when long after we're gone, uh, that they will have a city that we've enjoyed and will hopefully they will continue to enjoy. And we are looking forward to a lot more of their input through the Youth Commission and, and other areas going forward with the general plan. This is more you know, of a personal comment in the way I conduct meetings. Uh, I do my best. I try to do the best job that I can every meeting that we have. Um, I do try to watch when hands are raised. I do not cut anyone off. And I've made mistakes. But I will continue to be very attentive to those whose hands are raised online, as well as people that are here in person. And I, um, much of the way I do public comment period stems from my eight years on the school board where uh, I noticed that sometimes during public comment, board members were speaking a little bit more even sometimes than the public was. And I felt so strongly that the, that's the public's time to speak and for our time to listen. And uh, I hope I haven't carried that too far, but we do always have our directors here. Our police chief is here. Our fire chief is here this evening. All of our directors to address any of the issues that you have. And you can always send me an email which goes directly to our city manager by law. He gets them all, I transfer them to him, and he asks for appropriate staff to respond to every resident in our community for any uh, tree that they're having problem with, whether it's a bike path, whether it's a bridge, just send an email and, and you will receive a response and, and it will be addressed. I will stop with that. You're welcome. Uh, next on the agenda, is uh, city manager comments and reports. Do the city manager have any comments and reports? None tonight. All right, next on the agenda is unfinished business. And we will start with item 25. Consider approving the fourth amendment to the purchasing agreement with Grover Landscape Services Incorporated of Modesto, California for landscape maintenance services to extend the term period for an additional three years and six months and increasing the amount of the agreement by an amount not to exceed $10,745,509 for the extension period. And we will have a staff report from um, Lori uh, 
Smith. Smith. Thank you. How would I do that? <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary Thank you. Fallon, members of City Council. That's right, Lori Smith, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhoods. We'll start out with learning how to operate the, there we go. I don't know who did that, me or you, but thank you. Um, in fiscal year 1516, the city manager authorized the purchasing manager to issue a formal RFP. Um, two bids were received and Grover was uh, deemed the most competitive. So in October of, the same, of 2016, council authorized an agreement with Grover to provide landscape maintenance services for the city. Then in February of 2019, the First Amendment was approved, and this amendment added some additional sites and um, added some additional money for unanticipated emergency repairs and extra work. It increased the contract for, um, by approximately $1.2 million to a total of 9.58. In May of 2021, Council approved the Second Amendment that increased the agreement by 3.4 million and extended the term to October of 2022. Now during that period of time, the agreement was coming to its five year conclusion in October of 21. The staff was not prepared to the issue the RFP, so we asked for that one year extension to prepare the RFP. And during that time, we met with our purchasing staff. You all, as you all know, the economy made a significant change and um, we were seeing significant increases in prices across all of our purchasing agreements. So we came back to council in October and asked for a six month extension so we could continue, continue to conduct analysis and research. Uh, I'll just help you out. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. So the, so the current agreement and the proposed amendment allows for negotiated price increases on an annual basis, and these price increases are tied to the Western CPI. Since the original agreement was executed in 2016, Grover Landscape has requested a 2.6 increase, which was done in 2021, and then this amendment, which was executed in, 20, in October of 22, and the ongoing uh, extension is an 18.64% agreement. So over the total 10 years, or six years, I'm sorry, total increase of 21.24%. In reviewing the Western Region Consumer Price in Index, the price change over the same period has uh, increased approximately 24.5%, and that's cumulative. And of course, there's other factors that uh, impact increases above the CPI, such as Fuel, the fuel index. Next slide, please. So the original agreement was for a five-year period, and it had one year option to extend for a five-year period. As I said earlier, we initially elected not to exercise that extension, but opted for the one-year extension to prepare the RFP. And that gave us enough time to do that, and I already went over that we extended the agreement through October of 2022, and I already shared with you that we were concerned about the increase in the cost of goods and services, requested the six month extension to continue the research, and this amendment now gets us to April of 23. Thank you. So this is very small print. I th believe it's in your staff report, but this is some of the um, comparative analysis that we did. We looked at the city of Elk Grove, we looked at the city of Lodi, and we also looked at the city of Merced. You can see what the terms of those contracts were um, originally, what the total cost of the contract, and then the increase. And you can see the increases ranged from 22 to 65 percent. Now, clearly, there are some differences in scope of work, as these are cities of different sizes. We did review their scope of work, and um, we feel confident that the increases are representative and would be um, comparative with what we would experience. Next slide, please. Um, we also looked at the city of Los Banos. This is of interest because they did go through the RFP process. You can see what their, uh, the bids they received were. Lowest bid was a 57% increase. Highest bid was 150% increase. And what they ultimately decided to do was to rebid. So they extended their agreement through March of this year and are gonna rebid their um, services. So this Fourth Amendment will extend the agreement 
for the remaining term of the contract, and that is October of 2026. The annual increases shall not exceed the Western CPI, and those, of course, are negotiated um, at the request of the contractor. Price adjustments are allowed for diesel flu fuel fluctuations. That's not easy to say. And they may be considered um, based on the index from the Energy Information Administration. In addition, any parts or materials purchased through the term of the contract, the vendor is allowed to apply to 10% markup to cover the cost to facilitate the purchase of those parts. And this is very common uh, to cover administrative and other labor costs involved in these purchases. And also, uh, as you were informed during the safety and community me meeting, the Finance Committee since that meeting has considered additional services for Measure H spending. It included three annual one-time cleanups of Pellendale, Briggsmore, and Cisk Road. Those have been added to this contract. The total amount of those are $604,000 over the three and a half years. Next slide, please. So this is what it looks like. Um, these are the various departments that receive services from Grovers. Parks and Rec is obviously the largest. Uh, the Police Department, Community and Economic Development uh, Department, those are CFD parks. That's where CFD is housed. Public Works, some right-of-ways. Of course, Tuolumne River Regional Park, which is its own funding source. And then some minor other departments and projects. The annual amount of this contract is approximately $2.8 and that includes extra services. Um, this contract, we've also calculated a 4% CPI increase, increase annually, anticipating that. So over the 10 years, the contract with Grover will be approximately $25 million, which equates to about 2.5 per year. So at this time, staff is recommending approval of the Fourth am Amendment to the Purchasing Agreement for Landscape Maintenance Services and extending the term for the additional three years and six months. Total amount not to exceed $10.745 million and authorizing the city manager and or his designee to execute the agreement. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. All right. Thank you for that report. Does council have any questions of staff? Council Member Bavaro. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, got a couple questions. Okay. Uh, looking at the original agreement uh, dated October 25th, uh, 2016 um, it, on the terms of the contract it states uh, pricing shall remain firm for the first three years of the contract pricing shall be negotiated on a year-by-year -year basis starting in the fourth year of the contract um, and my question is using the Western um, urban index the first uh, four years should not be included in that calculation of uh, 24 percent because that, that was exempt. I, I'm my math and working on that. Um, it should be 11.5 percent. Um, looking at 2021, uh, the consumer price or excuse me, the Western uh, Urban Consumer Price Index was. 6% and Grover came in at 2.6%. Uh, and then in uh, October of this last year, uh, it was 8.1% uh, and Grover came in at 19%. So my calculation is that uh, it's more, it's going to be double digit, but it's more at 11.5, 11.5%. That's number one question I have. Um, Looking at uh, the various amendments over the years, um, looking at um, amendment, uh, let's see, the fourth amendment, I noticed that um, in the previous amendments and the original document, there was not uh, a price adjustment for diesel fuel, but was added into the Fourth Amendment. So are you going to take the um, CPI, Western Urban CPI, and add the additional um, cost for the energy admission? 
uh, inf information administration? Is, so, how does that work? So I'm gonna need help with the second question from Deanna. Uh, but with regard to the first question, you're right. The contract did not provide for increases, but the increase from the CPI still occurred. And while the contract did not allow Grover to request increases, our comparison is what increases occurred and how did that impact their payment for goods and services. So I appreciate your pointing that out. And I, I would think that it was probably added in when the original contract was uh, negotiated and it was probably built in at that time. Um, that well, said, these were in advance. So, so I mean, the, the Western CPI doesn't come out until after the agreement is executed. So. I don't, I'm not. Actually, it comes out today to me. No, but I, 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 correct. But I don't believe they would know what it was going to be. Got it. Um, can you explain? Do you on, want uh, uh, Deanna to assist with question two? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now, the, the second question in regards to the index, we would treat them separately we would look at the Western index to look again at consumer price index, and then we would also then incorporate what the fuel index states. And again, I just wanna emphasize, just because those indexes are specified, there's still, you know, it's not just an automatic increase. That's just the measurable that we determine to evaluate whether the, in, the increase that's being requested by the vendor is within a borderline uh, authorization based on those index that are captured. It's just, again, a mirrors to validate whether the increases are reasonable, but they're not an automatic approval. So I just want to emphasize that. Yes, and they have to come back within 60 days to ask for that. Right. Uh, can you explain what contract markup means? It's on the original contract number item 12. Yes. So the contract markup is for parts and materials purchased through the term of the contract. So the vendor is allowed to apply 10% to cover the cost to facilitate the purchase of the parts and materials. This is a common business practice, covers their administrative and labor costs. Okay. Uh, do, do, does Grover have um, change request orders? Like if it's outside of their scope, and they have to do something that's outside of that scope. Is there change orders that uh, are presented to the city? Well, that's not generally how we function. So for example, we asked, we want to do some additional work on Briggsmore, Sisk, and Pellendale. We asked for a quote and then made a determination about whether or not it would be added to the agreement. So a change order implies it's work that has to be done and normally what we do is we determine whether or not it's work we want to be done and we request a bid or a quote, if you will. Okay, and um, finally, just my final comment. Um, you know, I have a real hard time getting my, my mind around comparisons to other cities uh, because it's really not, ap in my eyes, apples to apples. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know the dynamics in those other cities, don't know, I mean, you reviewed the scope of work and, and I don't know what the terms of the contract are. Um, so it's, it, in my business, I would have a hard time really relating to using outside as comparisons. Uh, that said, I, I, I get where you were saying, but I'm just really having a hard time getting myself around that. Uh, that's pretty much all the, the other questions you asked, answered, both you and the Director of Finance, uh, who spent uh, patiently time with me, uh, answered all my questions pretty much, and so um, I have no more questions at this time. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions from council members for staff regarding item 25? Mm. All right. See, seeing none, we will um, open co public comment period. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on <coughs> item 25? Um, all right. I see one hand online. Paul Soto. 
Uh, yes, Paul Soto. Um, I was with the considering the amount of money that's being spent. There, there. It does raise a few questions. I think uh, Councilman Bavaro was was um, going in that direction. Um, is there any bidding process? This is a significant amount of money to be and a commitment to be making to one particular company. So my question is, was there an open bidding process? What was the outcome of that bidding process? And if there isn't a bidding process, then why is there not one? What, what is it about this particular company and this exclusive ability of it to contract with the city for $10 million? Um, I think those are legitimate questions to ask. Secondly, um, what kind of wages are they paying their employees? Are the wages living wages? Have have are there pay increases, you know, year over year for the for the life of the contract? And the reason why I, I raise these questions is that for the most part, the demographic of their employer of the employees is going to be Mexicanos. That's what they're going to be. They're going to be Mexicanos from the immigrant communities. And there is a lot of wage theft and exploitation that goes on in those particular industries. In no way am I suggesting that this company engages in that. However, I'm speaking in a general term that these are questions that need to be asked. And they're legitimate questions because of the, the um, it's very easy for companies to exploit the immigrant populations. And you don't want to get into a situation where the city is spending money with no kind of consideration as to what are they paying the employees? Is that a livable wage? Um, and and what is their what is do they have any uh, wage step issues? You know, within their in their uh, in this budget consideration process. Um, uh, like I said, I I respect the fact that the, they obviously have a position with the city to be able to to uh, be considered for this. But I also think that in exchange for that, considering that it's $10 million, that these questions be asked and that they should have no problem producing the results of those questions so that they can be discussed openly here in public. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Lori will um, address Thank the question. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so with regard to the bid, as I explained in the, in the presentation, um, this contract was for a term of five years. It allowed a five-year extension um, and we elected we, we were in the RFP preparation process when the economy changed significantly and due to that our recommendation is to exercise the remaining five year the remaining three and a half years of the five-year extension um, with regard to the wages uh, as this is deemed a public works con uh, contract they are required to pay prevailing wage um, I do know that they have a competitive benefit package, and in most instances, our employees employees are paid more than uh, min, um, the prevailing wage, which I believe is fifteen dollars an hour. I believe their range is between eighteen and thirty-five. They also provide health insurance, a four hundred one k, and matching HSA program. All right. Thank you very much. Any other public comments regarding item twenty-six? Excuse me, item 25. All right, I will close public comments. Are there any comments from council members? I have a comment. Uh, not, not regarding item 25. No problem. Uh, all right, uh, council member uh, Bavaro, comments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I will be voting yes on the fourth amendment to the purchasing agreement with Grover Landscape uh, for landscape maintenance services to extend the term for an additional three and a half years. But I do have concerns with this extension and the overall bidding process. Given the current situation, the only other option to this three and a half year extension is to reopen and request for proposal. With only one or maybe two vendors large enough to bid this contract, and service the city of Modesto's landscaping maintenance needs, the request for proposal could very well come back at a higher uh, rate than 19%. Uh, this is a financial risk 
that the city of Modesto should not take. We have other options at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we have, we have no other options uh, at this point other than to approve this extension. My concern with the extension is all economic indicators that I've reviewed, including Western Urban CPI, uh, CPI all point to single digit, not double digit increases. Western Urban CPI simplified version is track, it tracks inflation, prices, and spending. In 2017, Western Urban CPI index increased 2.9% over 2016. Um, it also increased 3.5 in 19, uh, 2.8 in 20, 1.2 in 21, and 6% in October of, or 6% in um, October of 2022, actually it was 8.1%. Further review into the Western Urban CPI and the calculus in the marketing buckets, it still all points to single digit increases. Um, also let me note that um, the contractor, uh, the only way he can increase after his uh, four years is to make that automatic uh, request which was discussed by um, our director of parks. So for me, the question comes down to this. Why is the October 2022 Grover uh, landscape in double digits and not single digits as compared to Western urban CPI? It's because they can. Moving forward, the city of Modesto needs to study other considered requests uh, for proposal models and compare them to the agopoly bidding process that we currently have in our land, uh, landscape maintenance services. The council should explore, in, after in three and a half years, the council should explore breaking down the city of Modesto um, landscape maintenance to five or six regions. That would give opportunity for smaller landscape companies to participate in the bidding process, and that would increase more competition in this environment. Um, and then we could take the regions and compare it to um, uh, the whole aggregate for the city of Modesto, and then we can actually see what is best for the city of Modesto. As I said, I'm going to vote for this, but I don't like it. Thank you. All right, Council Member Wright. Yeah, just clarification, Lori. Um, originally, when we five years ago went out for uh, this proposal, we had different bids, correct? Two. Two. And who was the other? I believe it was TerraCare. TerraCare. Okay. And how many companies are out there that would, there only had two that bidded on this, right? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> just to be clear, that included growth. Right. Excuse me, um, Council Member Williams. Uh, thank you for this presentation. And uh, I am so moved by, I believe that the owners are in the building or those who are associated with Grover. Thank you for coming today because it really shows that you really care about Modesto, that you would show up, that you wouldn't sit back at home and, and think that everything is going to be without a uh, hunky dory, let's use that term. <laughs> Uh, but thank you for everything that you have done for the city of Modesto, and thank you for being here tonight. All right. I do not. Does, do any other council members have comments? Council Member Ricky. Vice Mayor Ricky. I'll get it right That's about okay. six months into the year. Thanks, sure. Mayor. Um, I just want to um, also echo um, Council Member Barro's sentiments. Um, I do think that it's important that we look closely at our bidding processes and that we are obviously as... Uh, careful as we can be. Thanks. Uh -huh. Any other council comments? All right. I need a motion for a resolution approving the fourth amendment to the purchasing agreement with Grover Landscape Services Incorporated of Modesto, California for landscaping maintenance services to extend the term period for an additional three years and six months and increasing the amount of the agreement by an amount not to exceed $10,745,509 for the extension period and authorizing the city manager or his designee to execute 
the amendment. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. Motion by Council Member Wright, second by Council Member Williams. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Scutia Brayton? Aye. Council Member Alvarez? Aye. Vice Mayor Ricky? Aye. Council Member Bavaro? Aye. Council Member Williams? Aye. Council Member Wright? Aye. And Mayor Wallen? Aye. So the motion carries uh, unanimously 7 0. Can we take a five minute I'm going to announce that we were going to take a five minute break to return at 7 35. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. You're welcome.
All right, we will call the meeting back to order. It is 7.36 p.m. And we will go on to new business. Item 26, consider approving an initial spending plan related to Measure H for fiscal year 2022-23 to address quality of life issues in the community and authorizing the city manager to carry out the necessary steps to implement the initial spending plan related to Measure H. So we will start with a staff report from uh, Steve Christensen. So good evening, council, mayor. So tonight, this is the um, initial spending plan related to Measure 8. Um, a little bit of background. <coughs> um, so you can see that, again, uh, since the Great Recession of 2008, the city of Modesto has faced deficits in the general fund. Um, the structural deficit has been oops, has been systemic and ongoing. Um, we've had an uh, increase in service demands that have occurred throughout the years. Significant cuts have been made um, to every portion of the city's budget. Uh, impacts have been felt uh, in public safety, parks, the road conditions, traffic safety, our ability to combat blight um, and improve homelessness efforts. Staffing reductions have been or have adversely affected the city's ability to deliver um, the levels of service that the community needs. Um, in the general fund, we've reduced 27% uh, of our staffing. Uh, that's the equivalent of 225 uh, full-time positions. That includes 77 uh, sworn police positions, 56 fire personnel, and 92 other general fund positions over that time period. So um, Measure H, uh, in November, on November 8th of 2022, the voters passed Measure H. This is a one cent sales tax for general city services. On November 29th uh, of 2022, council certified the election results. Um, in this fiscal year, in terms of Measure H revenues, April 1st is when the state will begin collecting the sales tax revenue from Measure H. Uh, we're estimating that the annual revenues um, will be approximately $39, $40 million for Measure H. And for the initial um, quarter of collections of this revenue, so for that time period of April to June of this fiscal year in 2023, uh, we're estimating that's going to be roughly $10 million. That $10 million has not been budgeted, um, so at this time it's not appropriated for any expenditure in the 2023 uh, budget. So a little bit of a discussion. Um, citizens made it clear with the passage of Measure H that uh, they really have a desire for an increased level of service in Modesto, that they want to address those pressing needs in the community. Um, you can see on this chart here, um, there were some accompanying language in the ballot measure that had some examples of expenditures. Um, that would be provided through Measure H. So funding to address police, patrols, gang, drug, and crime prevention, funding to address the fire protection, paramedic, and 911 emergency response, funding to address homelessness, uh, funding for cleaning up the trash and illegal dumping, funding to keep the streets, parks, um, sidewalks, landscapes, and our infrastructure safe, clean, and well-maintained throughout the city. For this initial spending plan for the Measure H funds, again, we're talking about that $10 million from that April to June period. Um, department staff work to develop a proposed plan of improvements um, where we can have an immediate and great impact on the community within the scope of the measure. Um, so we can look at these four different areas um, in that proposed improvements that we have for you tonight. Uh, we're looking at public safety, blight, homelessness, and then citywide deferred maintenance. So looking at the different departments um, that are in this initial spending plan, uh, we have the police department. We can see that uh, their proposed improvements include adding additional staffing for the park ranger program. Uh, this included four additional park rangers, uh, the addition of a maintenance worker and three part-time maintenance workers uh, to combat blight around the city. Um, and this was mainly um, uh, again, focusing on blight prevention um, for blight abatement teams. Addition of two police civilian investigators. Um, 
This was to help uh, alleviate some of the patrol officers in the spectral victim unit and the uh, traffic units, so to get those patrol officers back on the streets. And then adding some equipment um, and other needs for those additional positions as well. So total spending in the police department of a million dollars in this initial spending plan. And then looking at the fire department, uh, $440,000 total proposed. This is looking at a community risk assessment and standards of cover. And then that's again looking at the um, 911 emergency response uh, for the city. And then actually growing the advanced life support service in Modesto. So uh, again, looking at that paramedics and expanding the paramedic program uh, for the fire department. For the Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhoods Department, uh, we have uh, additional expenditures that are being proposed in the areas of blight and parks maintenance, total of $1.15 million. So we're looking at, um, I think Lori mentioned it in the previous item, but one-time spring cleanups at Briggsmore Avenue, Pellendale Avenue, Sisk Road, as well as additional tree trimmings in various parks throughout the city. Um, doing park, adding a park maintenance crew. Um, so this included additional positions. Uh, let me get it here. Um, uh, one supervisor, two mechanics, and six maintenance workers. And then also doing some playground repairs at the uh, Martoni tot lot, and then tennis court lighting repairs um, at Davis Park. Um, and then also adding playground area wood trips, wood chips throughout the various parks in the city. On the public works department, uh, we're looking at doing some additional work for blight and illegal dumping, as well as some landscape maintenance and infrastructure maintenance. So this included uh, $1.8 million in funding. Please note on your handouts, and I apologize for any of the public that took handouts, your total is incorrect on your handouts. It's $1.8 million. I believe your handouts say 900 and something thousand dollars. That's <laughs> my mistake. I just want to point that out. Uh, so it's $1.87 million. We're looking at adding two drive up and drop off events. I know those are really popular when we held those for people to go and um, drop off their bulky items. And then um, the extension of the Grover Landscape Services Agreement um, for forestry services. And then the addition of two illegal dumping and blight abatement quick response teams. So this is adding some additional positions of um, two full-time maintenance workers and one part-time maintenance worker for each team. So a total of four full-time maintenance workers and two part-time maintenance workers for both of those teams. And then upgrading lighted crosswalks throughout the city as well. Um, so you can see here, bro breaking it down by the different um, priorities on there, 